So we'll find out how these players go about this. Game number three, about to start right now. So we head on to Aklan Waste. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. The only foreigner in the group is now 1-1 against his opponent to the northwest position from Team Frenetic Array in the blue trunks playing Zerg. It is Petraeus. Will he betray us or will he betray us, Greetor? Oh, what? See, who, who's bringing up that now? Hey, hey, that's that's a TB original. I'll let you have that one. There you go. He's up against his opponent from T I Team IVD Gaming in the Red Trunks uh, playing Terran to the southeast. It's Apocalypse. TB, you don't know about Petraeus, do you? What, General Petraeus? Yeah. I, I'm aware of General Petraeus, yeah. You know they call them General Petraeus, right? Yes, that, that's about the extent of the wit you can expect from cable news. <laughs> hey man, I get all my information from Fox and CNN. Greatest. That's wonderful. So there you we know, go. Palmer there is, we go. Uh, We're three Satan for three, Hitler, TV. Right? <laughs> We're three for three. There you go. <laughs> So, you know, Obama is eight foot tall with lasers under his mustache and a huge eyeball in his forehead, right? Yes. He's just, he's possessed. What can I say? It's very accurate. 105% of people agree, according <laughs> to Fox Polls. The whole 105, not just part of it. Yep, all of it. All 105%. Uh, classy networks on our... All right, I gotta get away from it. American television, American yes. television, yeah. that's really what it is, man. It's American a... cable news, the only entertainment less less quality and less informative than a StarCraft cast, I, I gotta say. Our news has more entertainment than our reality shows. That's... that's everything has more entertainment than your reality shows. <laughs> Absolutely everything. In reality is more entertaining than your reality shows. Hey, Jersey Shore is top quality. Don't even... You know we had a British version? Really? Yeah. What it's was called? It's called Geordie Shore. What, what shore? Geordie Shore. It was based in Newcastle, which is where I grew up. It's my hometown. And everyone that comes from there is called a Geordie. And it happens to, of course, be on the coast. So they called it Geordie Shore. Ge Geordie Shore. It ran for maybe uh, one season and then they cancelled it. I think because everybody in the town absolutely hated it. <laughs> you know, I'm from the Jersey Shore, right? Oh, I, I could definitely tell. So we share that commonality right now. Both of our hometowns have been just disgraced by reality TV shows. Do you own shares in a hair gel company by any chance? Uh, I'm not going to say no. But Fair uh, enough. I can just imagine you putting on spray tan and walking around in, in a tank top and just being a general asshole to everybody. How do you think I'm so dark as it is? <laughs> you just get the bottle out every time. It's... <laughs> The and NSL makeup artist supplies the spray tan before exactly. each cast. No, no, no. Wow. I, I demanded it. I demanded it. That's what it was. Obviously, it's part of your rider, that and no brown M&Ms. <laughs> you know me too well, Tovisco. I, I have the dossier. I have a lot of information. So Apocalypse almost lost his Reaper in all of that nonsense. Uh, no, that no, was no. a little bit silly. Total Biscuit, now we have a lot to talk to. Let's talk about the build. Petraeus, what's he doing? Well... Not a huge amount. I mean, he is going with his, I would say his gasless build, but he's going with, it's not gasless, it's just he's barely got any. This is the oldest of old school style for the Zerg, where he'll take gas, he'll get enough gas to get the spawning pool metabolic boost upgrade, and then he'll put one in gas, so it just very slowly ticks over to layer tech. Three. And as you said, very standard, just keeps you safe against everything. With the metabolic yep. boost out, Hellions won't be able to just crush everything all together. Again, Apocalypse not doing something all that standard. Um, I was going no. to say so, but normally get your Tech Labs ASAP. But it looks like, okay, he didn't get the second, uh, second refinery for this. Mm, he did get a second Reaper, so he's kind of going with a bit of a wonkier version of the pulp build by the looks of it. Then he's adding his Tech Lab on after that, and... I wonder if he'll actually wait for a... I would expect we're going to see a medevac out of that. I wonder if he'll wait for the medevac before he goes out. Oh, hello. He's going to meet a couple of links in the process. Oh, Ooh. nice surround right there by Petraeus. Nails down one Reaper. Can he get another? He's going to try to take the Hellion out, and they're just running for cover right now, and Apocalypse is just barely able to get them away. It's a nice pick off there. Uh, I thought he yeah. was actually going to get that other Reaper, but... He almost got that Hellion. If you can limit that Hellion count, it helps out so much. The build Oi. of Terran is so relied on having all those Hellions alive. If you ever have the chance to kill them, 
kill them because that messes up a lot of their ability to deny creep spread and even messes up their production because normally you want to lift that factory up to make a reactor for your other buildings. You want to put the reactor onto one of your barracks so you have more additional units. And when you can't do that, that means all your timings are messed up incredibly terribly. So killing yeah. Hellions, super important. Wow, Apocalypse is actually having to do a supply drop here just to keep up with things, which is unusual, of course, to see a pro player do that at this stage of the game. But the couple of options that we could have seen from the starport were the potential for elevator play, which does happen from time to time with a medevac or, of course, a banshee. So very old kind of humor-esque style coming out here, I think, but only a single banshee. And now he's going to land that elsewhere and then perhaps lift up the barracks, plop it on there and get himself some upgrades for his units. Pretty Hellion heavy. I mean, there's eight on the field already. He's actually going to go all the way up to 10 with a Hellion Banshee play. Kind of scared right now. There's only two queens out in the field or out in the That's middle of the field. Silly. And they're just oh, going to get, get roasted. Apart. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Zergen's going to get in here trying to do something. Don't push around. He can't get it. And that leaves that queen exposed, which is then very easily picked off. The Spore Crawler's in a fantastic position to conveniently take out the Banshee. And Betrayus obviously knows that, which is why he wanted to have that engagement happen there. But at the end of the day, there are still nine Hellions on the field. Very few of them have actually died. A couple more go down there. Lings continue to come in sort of piecemeal here. And Petraeus is definitely trying to just stop this push from getting to his base. Banshee, whoa, almost kills that one queen. Two queens barely left alive. So Petraeus barely holds on. Nicely done, though. I mean, that puts him ahead. Yeah, that wasn't bad there by Petraeus. That was really, really good. Didn't lose too many queens. Lost a bunch of lings, but again, that's just minerals on three bases. You're not really concerned with that too much. And he held the Hellion push back from the drone line. And that was a big investment of Hellions. He built 10 Hellions. And he he's got six remaining. But at this point, that gives a nice amount of map control to... Oh, wow, wow, Petraeus, you crazy, crazy, crazy person. We were talking about that, his commitment to timing attacks, and that is a massive 1-1 one, one Baneling timing That's right. In. And if he kills all of these Hellions, the game's over. Like, there, are, the Marines will barely do anything. You see the Marine production is so slow as it is. So oh. many failing busts. The classic, classic style. The Hellions almost get caught out, but they get in a decent position. Will he be able to kill all of these Banelings? I've got to say, he's going to make his way to the mineral line and a little bit of miscommunication there from the Baneling command as they go in the wrong direction. And it looks like that is going to be the uh, cleanup as the last few Banelings do detonate. And then we will see just how much damage was done. Not enough by any stretch. Eight workers killed by Petraeus there. A few Hellions here and there. That was really well held by Apocalypse. That commitment did not pay off there for the Zerg. I'm very surprised. Apocalypse really impressed me with that micro. I, I thought That's he was dead help. for sure. I mean, that was just so should've many Banelings. Been. He should have, right? Like, normal people would have died. I would have died. There's no doubt in that. And uh, Apocalypse just managing that just with straight up Hellions. And against 1-1, one, one, uh, against 1-1 one, one Zerglings, things can get really, really difficult. I mean, your Hellions die so much faster. As it stands right now, Petraeus. Uh, he's still, I mean, yeah, that wasn't a great attack, but he's still not in a bad position. Income tab showing 70 harvesters to 50. Yeah. That's a nice advantage to have. So maybe throughout all of that, he did drone heavily behind there. And with the build that we saw from uh, from Apocalypse, it wasn't too economic focused, so he is no. behind in economy. Yeah, I mean, he built all those Hellions and wasn't able to do anything, so that kind of evens things up, because we had a big commitment from Apocalypse, which did nothing. Then we had a big, bigger pit. Yeah, try again. That's a really hard thing to say. Big commitment there from Petraeus to try and do something that really didn't do much. But when all's said and done, Petraeus sits on three bases and that absurd number of harvesters and remains unharassed, which puts him in a good spot. A couple of uh, Lings try and pick up this drop that's coming in. Spore Crawler moves into position, which is not quite where it needs to be. Queen moving in as well. There's easily enough links to stop this from happening, though. I like Petraeus's play. I mean, these Spore Crawlers are so important, as you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, having them there, just that perimeter stops a lot of these shenanigans from happening. They can even kill them all together. Muta's gonna pop out on the field. There's a great sandwich. Centrifugal Hooks is already finished as well. And that is a Easy. dead... Easy peasy. Well, triple drop... Yeah. Well, that's one way of doing it, I suppose. Oh, one drop. I've got more than that. But the Bane is now coming in. The connection's coming cool. in as well. And that is a wipeout. Nice and easy. Very well done by uh, by Petraeus. I mean... He's holding well. Apocalypse wasn't able to micro. That's what it comes down to. You can't micro when you're back backed up against the wall. And no. I think... And you can't lift up either because you'll die to muters. It's yeah, great. Exactly.
So I, I think there's a position where actually like Petraeus's position, even though that bailing stuff happened in the beginning stage, the the income and we've seen Petraeus in macro games. He's just a monster now. That's scary. Yeah, it's really scary. And I think Petraeus is going to try a two-two timing here with plus one on his meters because he's already building a big swell of. Banelings. He never stops building drones, which is really strange to see, actually. He'll build a bunch of units, but he'll also always put a couple of drones in there here and there. But this 2-2 is about 40 seconds from finishing, and it lines up quite nicely. If he finds an advantageous position, he's going to try and attack with it. And I'm interested to see how well this is going to do. I am too, and just like we, we always know uh, Apocalypse to be, I mean, he's being aggressive. And he's also switching over. He wants to get that Thor into his composition pretty soon here. That's how he deals with the mass uh, the mass mutilists a lot of the times and just tries to have so much power in his army rather than trying to finesse it like we see a lot of these marine bio players uh, trying to do it. Muta's going into the third base though. This could complicate things. But oh, it's not quite enough. Not quite enough. The repair comes in nice and quickly here. There's just... He went in before plus one. That's the weird thing. If he'd waited about 10 more seconds, that missile turret would have definitely died because of the extra damage. So it's a little strange. But we'll see what Petraeus decides to do. He's not going to attack for the time being. He is researching Burrow for the first time, though. Burrow, obviously very important for some mind games. Force out a lot more scans. That's important to just limit the economy of your Terran player. The big scan starts up. Are we going to have an engagement? Petraeus needs to be careful. It does not want to attack off creep. There's a lot of units here. Thor on the way. Mm. This timing for him has disappeared, though. Apocalypse has just finished his 2-2, so if Petraeus did want to exploit a timing window, he certainly didn't get the opportunity to do that. And now, if we see the Petraeus style as before, he's very slow to go to Hive Tech, which means with 3-3 immediately kicking in, which I think Apocalypse has realized, hey, this guy doesn't take the Hive that soon, I can get a 3-3 edge on him, and I can have this massive window just to absolutely destroy him, then this could get hashtag dicey for, uh, for Petraeus, but very. we'll see. Very yep. hashtag dicey. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, Petraeus, he overdoes it with these these banelings in the first fight. That's the one thing I kind of like about his style. It just tries to get a gigantic advantage. But, you know, if... Oh, nice connection. That was nice. Got a couple of Widow Mines and some Marines there. And he's sending in a few banelings at a time because he knows Widow Mines are going to be a problem here. And he needs to... Wow. There's only two Mines left in the field. And there's still 26 banelings. Oh, oh the flank my is God. massive. He, look, he's going to catch this out. This is going to be devastating. The, oh, wow. That was... I have never seen that much Terran evaporate <laughs> that quickly. Petraeus just rocked that completely. Incredible. That was beautiful. Um, what it came Wipes down to, out. as you were talking about, the small packs of banelings.